Hi there everybody, so in this video we're looking at the mitotic cell cycle uh, and we're actually focusing on the details of the chromosome, so chromosome behaviour at each stage. So if we think about the cell cycle then, um, we've looked at this already in another video just uh, very briefly, so in a bit more detail. What we've got here then is we have got our cell and this cell is going to divide. So the first thing that will happen is that the cell will replicate its DNA um, and so now we've got two nuclei with two lots of identical DNA and that process is mitosis. So we will look at the details of what goes on here in a moment. Once we've got our cell with our uh, two nuclei which are identical then those two have to be separated out into two new daughter cells and that process is known as cytokinesis so that's the splitting of this into two new daughter cells. Once we've got our two new cells, each of those cells has to grow because obviously this cell here um, is sort of half the size of our original cell. So once we've got a cell which is growing, it's called interphase and this takes up the majority of the cell cycle. At some point during its life, so once it's reached its full size, um, that cell will then again undergo mitosis and so on and so forth. So this process will continue. So um, here we have the beginning of two new cells uh, which will divide by cytokinesis. Each of those cells will then enter interphase and so on. Now in order to go from one of these new daughter cells to a cell which is um, ready to then divide again, growth is needed. Okay, and as I said, that's obvious. You can see that this cell here is half the size of the cell over here. So during interphase, the first thing that happens is a growth phase. And for example, proteins would be uh, synthesized. We would need more organelles. And this first stage is called G1, so the G1 growth stage. After that, we get a stage of synthesis. And it's where DNA is replicated. So obviously things are being synthesized in the growth stage as well, but the S phase represents the synthesis, the replication of DNA. Because if we're going to go from um, a cell, one cell, to two identical cells, then we need twice as much DNA. The third stage of interphase is another growth stage. And during this stage, um, we get uh, more proteins being made, but also this is where the centrioles finish their replication as well and this is called G2. So interphase is made of G1, S and G2 and then again we could say if we're labeling this whole diagram then over here because this is also interphase until we end up with our full cell uh, we've got G1, S and G2 there as well. Okay so that's interphase um, then we have to look at the details of what's going on here in mitosis. So here is our cell. Um, now I've drawn here a, a big nucleus. I uh, represented the membrane with a double line because of course the nucleus, uh, the nuclear membrane is a double membrane. Um, I haven't shown any nuclear pores here so be aware there would be nuclear pores. And then what we've got here, uh, this represents all of the chromatin, so the genetic material wrapped around the histone proteins. We've also of course got a nucleolus, so here's our nucleolus, and we've got our centrioles. So this is a pair of centrioles here made up of microtubules. So during interphase one of the things that happens is the uh, the centrosome, which is the area um, in which you find the centrioles, that replicates. So we've seen that that finishes in the G2 phase. So it starts earlier, but it finishes in G2. So we end up with a pair, um, a replicated pair. So we've basically got two pairs of centrioles. As we move from interphase into prophase, our centrioles move so that one pair of centrioles moves to one side and the other pair of centrioles moves to the other side of the nucleus. We say they are at the poles. The other thing that happens in prophase, the first stage of mitosis, 
is that the nucleolus disappears. And then what we see is that the chromosomes shorten and thicken, they condense. So I've drawn the chromosomes here um, as red and blue to represent uh, maternal and paternal chromosomes. Um, but the important thing is that you can actually see individual chromosomes here. Okay, each of these represents an individual chromosome. Whereas before that happened, previously, you can't actually make out all the individual chromosomes. So this is our uncondensed uh, DNA, uncondensed chromatin, and then in, pro in prophase, the chromatin condenses, which means that the chromosomes shorten and thicken, and we can start to see them. From the centrioles, so our pair of centrioles, one at each pole, uh, microtubules start to develop. And these microtubules are known as spindle fibres. So the whole thing, so all of these microtubules together coming from both poles, uh, they represent the spindle and the spindle is made of spindle fibres. The nuclear membrane then disintegrates and what actually happens is that it breaks up into vesicles. Okay, so it breaks up into vesicles and because vesicles are so small, uh, what that means is that we then actually can't see the nuclear membrane there at all. So the vesicles, it breaks up into vesicles, the vesicles disperse throughout the cell so there is no nuclear membrane left. The chromosomes continue to condense and shorten. So now we can see them um, as this sort of uh, this, this X. Now it's important to remember that the chromosomes actually replicated themselves during interphase. So even at, at any stage in prophase, the chromosomes do have this sort of X shape uh, because the DNA has been replicated. But you don't start to see it clearly until a bit later in prophase when the chromosomes um, condense so they shorten and thicken so much that we can see that distinctive shape. The microtubules continue to develop until they are now stretched all the way across. Um, so we've got uh, spindles from pole to pole. The centromere of each chromosome then uh, attaches to one of the microtubules. And once they're attached, they're then able to start moving towards the middle of our spindle. And that is what we see during metaphase. So suddenly in metaphase, this is um, very distinctive because the chromosomes are all lined up um, and they're lined up at what we call the equator. So this middle part here is the equator. And they're lined up, as you can see, in a random order. They're not in pairs, they're just on their own, lined up um, at the equator of the spindle. Moving into anaphase, this is where the chromosomes um, move back to the opposite poles. And for this to happen, the centromere, which is holding our two sister chromatids together, the centromere splits and the chromatids are pulled one towards each pole. So what you see happening is this. And importantly, the, uh, the chromatids, so this was a chromatid. We can now call this a chromosome. We can also still call it a chromatid at this early stage, just to be clear what's happening. So the chromatids are pulled apart, and this chromatid here is going to move towards the pole, and it's being uh, it's attached by the centromere here, which means the centromere leads. So this happens to all of our chromosomes, and the way that they move towards the poles is because the microtubules get shorter. And as they get shorter, because they're attached to the centromeres, they pull the centromeres with them. So the chromosomes or the chromatids are getting closer and closer to the poles until they're right at the pole. And this is where we would say telophase begins. So the microtubules in telophase um, would now completely uh, disappear. All of our chromosomes are now at the poles and we've now got two sort of separate sections. Okay, so this here will become one new the new nucleuses or one of the new nuclei, sorry, and this will become the other new nuclei. The chromatin starts to uncondense again 
So that means that it's getting uh, the chromosomes get uh, get thinner and they get longer. Our nuclear membranes, and now of course we've got two of them, they will reappear. Again, the chromosomes are getting um, less and less condensed. Our nucleoli will reappear. So we've now got a nucleolus in each of our new nucleoli, in nuclei, sorry. <laughs> so we've got a nucleolus in each of our uh, nuclei. And then we're ready to move into cytokinesis. So going from telophase into cytokinesis, um, what you might see is that a cleavage furrow. So the, the, the in between the two nuclei, we start to get this pinching um, of the cell membrane and cytoplasm. So the, it's a bit blurry as you go from telophase into cytokinesis. So cytokinesis is the process of splitting one cell into two separate cells. So we've got the cleavage furrow and then that cleavage furrow just gets bigger until eventually we have two completely separate cells. Each cell contains a nucleus and each nucleus has got identical genetic information as each other and it's identical to the cell that first started this whole process. So if we have a look at some actual um, micrographs of what's going on in mitosis, both of these show prophase. Uh, this is an earlier stage of prophase prophase so the chromatin is still very much uncondensed. Um, here we can see that the chromatin is starting to condense more so we can start to see um, the chromosomes a little bit more clearly. Metaphase is very distinctive because you can see all of the chromosomes are in sort of a narrow band. They obviously yes some of the um, uh, some of them do they sort of stick out a little bit but basically they're all in a band which is at the center the equator of our spindle. Anaphase moving apart and then telophase the chromosomes have reached each pole quite distinctively. Okay that's it thanks very much.